on to week 12 now. I believe I will continue my dance, but I'm gonna actually take Lore. Where's Lore at? Lore is in Faith. There we go. I didn't look at what Lore was, but you can probably guess. You practice walking on the arm of a partner and following their cues to pause and turn while keeping your eyes closed. You practice different partner dance positions, closely held at a distance and non-contact, and the appropriate hand placement for each. Only a Lumen can channel magic, and only with the help of an attuned crystal. The ability to control a crystal seems to be inherited, so crystals can be passed from parent to child upon the Lumen's death. Hmm. Ah, your highness. What a pleasure it is to meet you in person at last. Your description did not do you justice. I'm 15! No, I'm 14! Giggle. I don't know how to deal with handsome older men paying me compliments. I was so pleased to hear that you had accepted my humble offering. A jewel for a jewel. But you are the more precious. I hope that this is only the beginning of a mutually beneficial relationship. A union between us would bring stability to both our peoples. He really does want to marry me. Uh, sorry, brah. Gonna have to let him down. I need to let him down gently. Happy to see those court manners getting put to good use. I am not marrying you. I'm only 14. <laughs> that may not have been gentle. I see. I regret the misunderstanding. Well, I'm going to go make myself depressed. I have to go think about how I embarrassed myself. But did I embarrass myself in front of her? Hmm. Anyways, uh, take Lore now again. The kings and queens of Nova have all been lumens uh, for centuries, but in modern times, magic is only used for ceremonial occasions and the direst of emergencies. Long, long ago, the continent of Borealis was ruled over by a single witch king until a rival line of lumens challenged for the crone. crown. Crone? <laughs> I don't know why I tried calling a crown a crone. <laughs> the resulting wars went on for a hundred years with powerful spells that damaged the land. So badly that even now no plants will grow. Mm, sadness. Legend has it that long ago a horde of Yevani on the back of tentacled monsters rode into the valley of Mead laying waste to all in their path. Their conquest was only halted when a Lumen raised a great flood to drown the invaders. Moses, is that you? No, he parted the waters. He didn't create the flood. You are requested to stand in judgment. A woman has been convicted. Uh, a woman has been convicted to a of attempted murder and request the mercy of the crown. Your Highness, this slut and dares to beg pardon when she admits that she tried to poison my sister under her own roof. Which sister? Corsidine, the Duchess of Mead. Is she alright? She is unharmed. We caught the culprit in the kitchens before anyone could eat her foul spew. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? It's justice, it is. Them devils killed me brother and broke me ma'am's heart. Lie to her, they did. When she went to see why they, why he'd not come back, she said he'd gone for a soldier when he will and he never would. He wasn't the only one, neither. I waited ten years for my chance to get my own back. That's justice. You say she's completely unrepentant. Hang her and be done with it. Hmm. This might have something to do with the last Duke of Mead. He was involved in all sorts of scandals. Hmm. Ask the Arl of Io. I need to know if she has any justification for her actions. Did the old Duke kill her brother? Are you accusing my family? I'm asking what happened. The honor of our line is far greater than that of the wet-bottomed child who sits the throne. What? 
Without warning, the Earl Io draws a dagger and slices the convict's throat. No one harms my family. No one. He throws the bloodstained blade to the floor and walks away. Oh. Well. That could have gone better. Though, ironically, it could have also gone worse. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's go back to the tomb. I need to feel sad again. All my stuff involves being sad. <laughs> All right, so glasses. Okay, so we're pretty much we're pretty much good on lore right now. Right now, what we need is uh, meditation and divinitation so that I can uh, get the suit for that. All right. You practice assuming a sitting position that allows you to be relaxed and tranquil, without being so relaxed that you are likely to fall asleep. You learn that the gods cannot be forced to divulge information about the future, and that the most powerful omens are those which arrive unexpectedly. As you are walking one day in the gardens, you hear a strange sound and look up to see an owl flying overhead. A single dry leaf flutters in his talons. Well, I'm glad to see I didn't take divinitation long enough to be able to determine that. That's funny, I thought owls were nocturnal. I guess I was wrong. When you return to the castle, your father is waiting for you. There is a woman here to see you. She wishes crowdfunding for a project. Thank you for seeing me, your royal highness. I, I come to you on behalf of the people. I wish to build a hospital where any citizen afflicted with disease can be brought for treatment. Putting all the sick people together, wouldn't that make them die even faster? I'm stupid. We're not interested. King is just... Oh my god, my child's an idiot. <laughs> Alright. Play sports! You take to the court for a few games of tennis. Feel the thrill of competition. Alright, again, still gonna keep taking meditation and divinitation so that I can get the outfit for that. So, what was it? Meditation. Finding and maintaining your own inner peace. Divinitation. Interpreting signs of from nature of what the future might hold. You close your eyes and relax every muscle of your body in turn, letting that feeling travel down through you from your head to your fingertips and toes. Dropping your favorite plate is bad luck. A statue spontaneously shattering is a bad omen. I'm pretty sure anything shattering spontaneously is a bad omen. You've unlocked a new outfit. Yay! Alright. Remember that the Festival of the Good Lady is approaching. There will be public celebrations for the commoners, followed by a grand gala for the nobility. The grand ball, there will be dancing. As queen, you would be expected to lead the procession and take part in the ceremonial of planting, possibly give a speech. However, since you are not yet crowned, it is not required, and it may not be safe to expose you to the public. What do you mean, not safe? Outside of the castle, you are less well protected. If anyone means you harm, think on it now, decide later. Word has come from the factory for books that you funded. They have assembled enough equipment to begin printing test pamphlets. As a royal sponsor, it is your right to decide the content of the first printing. Ah! Uh... <laughs> Poems praising your mother. Pro Lumen propaganda. No, no, religious doctrine. We should take this opportunity to celebrate our devotion to the gods, especially the good lady. The temples will be pleased by your piety. There is a letter for you as well. It's from... Brioni. There we go. Got her name. I went to school with her, but she's a couple years older than me. Her mother is the Duchess of Mead. She's complaining that her mother still won't let her come home for the holidays. Apparently her uncle, Caven, is absolutely furious about that woman's trial. She's bored and looking for an adventure. Well, I don't have any to suggest to her. Yet. Alright. Uh, can I go play sports again? You take to the court for a few games of tennis. Woo! Alright. Uh, by the way, the new outfit we have is the priestess robes. Woo! Don't I look... Yep, I'm gonna stay in the tuxedo cat. I'm gonna stay tuxedo cat. Haha! <laughs> tuxedo outfit though. 
just because I can't think of any time that, uh, well, I can think of times that, uh, Faith is going to help me, but it's not really going to help me right now. So, we're going to study lore some more. And for now, I guess, where the hell is it? Medicine. I'm going to learn about herbs. So, yay. Magical history of Nova and knowledge of helpful and harmful plants. Yummy. Legend says that the island do domain of Malini was once a single island instead of a cluster, until an invading Novian queen raised a terrible pillar of fire that shattered the land into pieces. At the height of the Novian Empire, all the major dukes and duchesses were lumens, and they conquered their enemies with beams of light and terrible summoned monster. Those monsters eventually broke loose, killing their captors and destroying the old capital of Kothri Lake. The resulting chaos shook the empire. You learn that willow bark can be used to relieve aches and fever. Yummy. Today is the procession and planting for the festival of the good lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. The people will recover from disappointment. If we lose you, there is no recovery. Nah, fuck it, I'll do it. I'll parade and make a speech. I am not afraid. I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. My little girl. You're going to die. <laughs> you prepare your best gown for the occasion, then walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter that's taller than you are. At the end of the route, oh god, you help the priestesses turn over the earth for the new tree to be planted. After the blessings are read, you hold up your hands and call for silence so that you can speak. Unfortunately, all the words you had planned go out of your head when you're faced with the moment. You manage a few polite sayings about the meaning of the holidays and thank everyone for attending, then turn away your cheeks red. The procession regroups to return to the castle. I did it, guys! Woo! I fucked everything up! <laughs> Alright, I will attend court. Alright, uh, we're gonna take a double dosing of herbs here. You learn that fever few can be few can be used to reduce tension and headaches. You learn that oil of cloves rubbed on the skin can relieve pain, particularly in teeth. Wonder if that's actually true. Are you ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in the domain are here to see you, to see their queen. Gulp. You finish dressing and descend the stairs to make a grand entrance. This is gonna go terribly. All around, the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you, the ruler of them all. Yeah, that went well. Seeing yourself reflected in so many eyes makes you want to run away and hide. After a moment, you force yourself to carry on, but you're sure they've all seen you hesitate. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and offers you his arm. The first dance is for us. He guides you gently around the dance floor, never rushing you. It's fun to dance with your father, but the look in his eyes is so sad. After this, you must choose your own partner. There are a number of men who hope to catch your eye. The Duke of Kagal alone has brought three eligible sons, all near your age. You look around the room at all your possible partners, which is to say, everyone. No one may begin dancing until you do. You can pick whomever you want, and you will not be denied. I'm glad I failed in that department too, but no. I'm thinking someone's scandalous. Mm. You don't want everyone assuming that whoever you pick first is your intended marriage partner, so why not make your choice as ridiculous as possible? With that in mind, you approach the Duchess of Ursul. You admit to yourself that you were hoping such an outrageous act would cause her to lose some of her composure, but she remains unruffled. At least the chorus of shocked whispers around you as you take your place on the floor is gratifying. Dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father. You knew him, knew his steps like a part of you. Now every move is a mystery, and I still fail the dance. Unfortunately, you lose track of which steps you're supposed to do when, uh, to do when, or supposed to do when, and trip over your own feet. Oops. 
Between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle, chat, and sample tiny bites of exquisite food. I also fail court manners and flattery because I suck at everything. During a lull in the music, Bannon, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass, letting the clear note ring out through the room. If I might, if I might have your attention, I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. Her words of wisdom guide us through our difficulties. Everyone applauds politely. As the gala continues, you take the opportunity to observe nobles that nobles that you rarely see. There's Gwenelle, for instance, the young lady of Sudbury, only months older than you and due to finally inherit control of her duchy soon. Or Adele, the youngest daughter of the Duchess of Ilya and a fierce sportswoman who set water on fire. Wait. <laughs> she was a few years ahead of you at school and the absolute terror of the ball fields. No Bryony, she had said her parents were leaving her stuck at school this season. Her parents are here dancing together, the Duke Consort clutching his Duchess positively tight. Strange that there's no sign of your cousins, though. Shouldn't they be here? Your aunt and uncle are here, of course. It would be scandalous if they hadn't come, Merva being so close by. It's nice to be able to enjoy time with friends and family, isn't it? Wow. It was actually interesting. I didn't expect to be able to... Well, then again, I also didn't have, uh... Uh, what? Uh, like, as high as I would want for that. But, uh, it worked out all the same. Anyways. Um, we're gonna attend court again. Alright, neat. So, I think... This time... We're gonna take battlefield medicine. And we're going to take herbs again. Yep. Uh, you learn that wounds, even minor ones, should be washed as soon as possible to prevent dirt from growing under the skin. Sage has a variety of health benefits. It keeps meat from spoiling, aids digestion, improves thinking, and may even help to bring color back into gray hair. Interesting. I want to know if that's actually true. You wander downstairs to visit your father and talk about the latest events in the domain. You're moving with such enthusiasm that you don't realize your father isn't alone until it's too late to avoid him and his... Companion. You are too kind, Jocelyn. Countess Siren, not a member of your circle. She's a bit more than a decade your senior. Far too old to have ever been your friend, and yet not at all old as noblewoman go. She has two minor titles, no husband, and your father's arm in her grasp. How dare she make a move on your father? Shame her with silent scorn. You meet her eyes and imagine your mother's disapproving presence behind you. She notices your stare, but only smiles at you ever so sweetly. Damn it, I suck at everything! <laughs> Darling Elodie, I hope you have been well. Fine. Perhaps we'll be seeing more of each other in the future. She gives a little wave and exits. Once she's gone, you raise an eyebrow at your father. Don't give me that look, young lady. She's a nice woman, nothing more. She wants something more? That line will still forever make me laugh. <laughs> and it's not going to happen anytime soon. You should be careful how you deal with people like Siren. You need the goodwill of your nobles as well as your commoners. There haven't been any problems so far. Many dark looks were aimed your way at the gala. As queen, you must be aware of everything around you. Isn't that what I have agents for? Yes, but you must give them direction. What is your greatest concern? Hmm. Noble plots. I need to know what the other nobles are up to, and whether anyone is plotting behind my back. As you wish. In the meantime, while I'm busy handing out assassinations to other nobles, I'm gonna go play with my toys. Alright, verify I am wearing the economics outfit. Alright. Ooh. So, for this one, we're going to now switch from herbs to poison. And still battlefield medication. Medicine, not medication. Nah, same diff. No, well, I guess not really. Nah, whatever. 
The first treatment for most ingested poisons is to purge the stomach by forcing the victim to eat powdered charcoal, which can absorb dangerous substances. Again, I wonder how much of that is true. You learn that blood loss wastes life energy. Bleeding should be stopped through bandages, pressure, and evol elevation. There we go. Hi, I know how to pronounce words. It is time. It is the time of the year to decide any necessary judgments to the royal budget. The majority of the money we receive is already spoken for. There is always some room for discretion. Based on records and notes, the current expenditures. If you maintain the current rate of tax, you will still have 5,119 gold Issei and 43 silver Tilisei available for special projects. Any little trade disruption shouldn't need more than a few hundred Issei to sort out, at least temporarily. Hmm. Nah, raise them. We need more money, raise the taxes a bit. If we adjust this and if we adjust this and this here, most people won't even notice the difference. Only the ones who can afford it will pay more. As you wish. <laughs> now that I've been it, now that I've finished working out that, I'm gonna go continue to play with my toys some more. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm going to take. Let's see. Hmm. I'm to uh. We'll take poison in the morning and herbs again because that'll work that self out yeah all right poison mm. certain poisons will counteract each other such that either on their own will kill the victim but carefully applying a matching amount of the other will cure you have unlocked a new outfit calendula flowers can be used in soothing teas as well as skin lotions it is also said to provide visions of one's secret enemies if worn under the light of a full moon Comfrey can be used to help mend broken bones. However, it is also slightly poisonous in large amounts and should not be eaten. Good to know. You are requested to stand in judgment. A man has been convicted of the murder by strangling of his wife. He does not deny the act, but requests a pardon that he might be set free. If you admit you killed your wife, why do you think I'm going to set you free? Save me, your majesty. Wasn't my fault. Demons made me do it. Everyone knows the powers of the magical beasties. They used me, twisted my fingers into chains. My wife found me screaming. She tried to shake me, and the chains wrapped around her. I need the priestesses to bless me and make me clean again. Hmm, demons that make you attack people, is that, a th is that even possible? Fuck it. I'm very sorry for your loss. The monsters are responsible, not you. Don't blame yourself. The priestess of the royal grove will take care of purifying you. Bless you, your majesty. I'm gonna instantly come to regret that I know it. Alright, gonna keep playing with toys. Alright, our new outfit is now the nurse's gown. Woo! Whoops. Nope. Don't want to do that yet. Still gonna stay in tuxedo. All right. Now we're gonna take in, what is it, athletics. Here we go, yes, athletics for running. You practice walking at a brisk but comfortable pace for a set length of time every day. You switch back and forth between a brisk walk and a light bouncing jog. Not too fast, you're building endurance rather than speed. My lady, there is a letter for you. Who sent this? It isn't signed. It appears to be a poem describing you in a manner that is entirely inappropriate for a queen. I what? With a squid? Hilarious. That's actually pretty funny. Just then, an incredibly unlucky breeze swirls between the windows of your tower bedroom, tugging the paper out of your hands and off into the sky. You stick your head out the window and discover the poem caught and fluttering on the roof nearby. You can almost reach it. Uh, fuck that. What's the worst that can happen? It blows off and someone reads it and laugh at, laughs at you? That's better than breaking your neck. Besides, if you're lucky, it will rain and wash the words away. Yes, indeed. Alright, sneaking out again later, losers. <laughs> 